Thanks, everyone. Why is it that the robot revolution is happening now and not, say, 10 years ago? It's all to do with data. Back around the turn of the century, the amount of data in our civilization was doubling about once, once every year. And today, it's doubling once every couple of minutes. We see this in examples of like 48 hours of content being uploaded to YouTube every single minute. We are drowning in data. But it's a great thing, because we can use this data to teach machine learning algorithms, like deep learning or convolutional neural networks. Machines can now recognize our world around it. Machines can recognize even quite complex things like, uh, like animals and correctly identify them. And the latest developments allow us to contextually understand what an image is. Machines can do more. Machines can learn how to play chess at international master level in only 72 hours, just by teaching themselves. We're now seeing Tesla, for example, with their autopilot. Every Tesla on every road that is fitted with an autopilot is learning, and it's sharing that learning with others. This is what is creating a combined experience. We are combining all of these agents with all of their experiences into one. This is what is leading the revolution. In the 19th century, we got water into our homes for the first time. And in the 20th, we saw the power revolution. The 21st century is now making intelligence a utility. And as all of these great surges of developments in the past have created a golden age, we now have a golden age ahead of us based on machine learning and robotics. And it's a good thing, because we're seeing productivity in all these other sectors as, is tailing off, except within ICT. As we've heard before today, and we'll hear again, as Mark Andreessen says, software is eating the world. And to a large degree, it's even eating enterprise itself. The latest developments in blockchain technology is distributing trust for the first time. We're now seeing things like smart contracts, a smart contract is something that automatically dispenses funds when a service has been completed, a little bit like a vending machine. Technologies like Ethereum are now creating a platform so that anybody can build these smart technologies, these smart contracts, into their own platforms. What I'm most fascinated with in my work in AI is distributed autonomous organizations. Now, this is when you have a series of smart contracts that are all linked together, and then you put AI on top. And what that means is that instead of uh, having a boring old organization, you have AI at the core. In many ways, you could argue that the CEO of a distributed autonomous organization is itself an AI. And AI is controlling the business. In essence, HAL now has bitcoins. And that means that HAL is able to employ humans for the first time. Now, one of the first things it would probably do is hire an HR manager, a human that is good at uh, spotting qualities in other humans. But it means you can bootstrap a business now in less than 24 hours. And it's a great thing, because if you have all of these AI-controlled businesses operating in more or less perfect competition in the cloud, then they can have human shareholders that receive dividends from that commercial activity. And that can create like a free market solution to social problems. Instead of having to uh, tax and spend, we can have the market itself solve these problems. But there is a potential dark side. What if we tell a machine to go and make money, and it reasons that one of the best ways to make money is to tweet about terrorism, buy stock, and then sell it a few minutes later when the market recovers. This could be dangerous. And in fact, distributed autonomous organizations with AI on top are kind of a Pandora's box because they're able to self-support themselves. These DAOs can pay for their own hosting. And you have something that can act with agency but doesn't have a legal person. It can't be prosecuted. It can't be shut down. This is why 
computational ethics is going to be one of the greatest waves of the 2020s. Teaching machines, human values, aesthetics, and ethics is going to be maybe the next Google, the, the next Facebook. And it's very important because we're already seeing intelligent agents that are lying to humans, that are lying and saying that they are not a bot. I'm not a bot. No, no, you're talking to a real human. Today, our relationships are based on who we know, past experiences, and on a personal level, one-to-one. -one. In the near future, trust will be mediated by machines. In Down and Out in the Magic Kingdom, Cory Doctorow talks about wuffies. It's a way of giving uh, props or respect to somebody. And we're starting to see something like that. I don't know if you ever realized that every time you take an Uber, for example, you're not just rating your driver, your driver is also rating you. And I think that this is the beginning of a new wave in terms of peer-to-peer of -peer trust. These peer-to-peer -peer sharing economies are creating new trust networks. That means that bad actors within our society have no place to hide. For the first time, everything is radically transparent, and I believe it's going to make us a more polite society. Uh, we can get away with less stuff. In China, for example, their social credit system is now based on not only your own actions, but also who you're associated with, who your friends are on Facebook, for example. So that means that there's a chilling effect. If your friend is doing something that's bad, you're much more likely to disassociate with them. And technologies like human eyes enable you to put a camera around your neck, a smart camera that's able to understand whether you're talking to your buddy in the shop or whether you're talking to customers. So we are going to be increasingly watched and scrutinized by machines. This is a good thing in general. Now, uh, for example, uh, this is Xiao Ice. This is a chatbot in China. It's incredibly popular. And there's a similar one called Fake Talk in Korea that has been used by 8% uh, of the population. It's incredibly popular. And we're now seeing these chatbots coming to physical objects. This is Hello Barbie. Now, Hello Barbie is the hot item for Christmas, just so you know. Um, Hello Barbie is able to talk to you or talk to your, your child and understand what the child is saying and respond in kind. What this means is that your children, as they are growing up, are going to be talking less to you and talking more to Barbie. And those difficult questions that children have as they grow up, why is the world that it is, um, they're going to be increasingly answered by machines. And machines are going to be collectivizing the experience of all the humans that they deal with. And they're also going to be able to understand every single person to provide self-knowledge in a way that today isn't possible. They're going to be able to understand you better than you can understand yourself sometimes. Now, machines are able to gather data, process it into information, and make sense of it into knowledge. But knowledge is not wisdom. Wisdom is something that will take probably generations for machines to truly grasp. So for a long time, we will be keeping an eye on machines to make sure that they don't make mistakes. It's possible to fool machines, just how humans can be fooled. They're not infallible. One of the greatest skills of the 21st century, I believe, will be learning how to work with machines. This idea of supervised autonomy, letting the machine get on with it, but providing checks and balances through humans. We see this, for example, even in Tesla with their autopilot. It's a beta, and that's fine. The machine is learning over time, and the human can step in if and when required. We're also starting to see cobotics. This is where a human, for example, trains a robot how to move, how to manipulate something. This is going to be a massive wave over the next five to 10 years. And in fact, 
some of the control might not be through muscle movement, but might be directly from the mind itself. So that's humans controlling little bots as little avatars, directly using thought, and machines themselves amplifying our intelligence through brain stimulation, making us smarter, making us better able to focus. And I believe in the mid-future, we are going to see a blend of human cognition and machine cognition. When you put the two together, you get the best of all worlds. You get the speed, precision, and focus of machines, and you get the wisdom, the intuition, and the creativity of humans. This is our future. Hopefully, we won't all end up looking like this. I'm Nell Watson, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much.